How's it going, everybody? And I am, you are going to see like a class. I just made a video. I was about to start a Bible study and I decided to just kind of pay a tribute to my old eighth grade picture. It kind of came up in a memory or my single photo did. And we figured out that it was from the same day we took a class photo at St. Joseph. I was raised Catholic. I'm not Catholic anymore, of course, obviously. I would like to think I am a true protester, but, um, you know, Martin Luther was raised Catholic too. And, uh, so, Hey, teach their own, the Lord's ordained everything. Uh, he brought me through a certain path. Uh, he raised me in astrology, just like Daniel was trained in astrology, which you shouldn't be doing. But Daniel was trained in it, and I was trained in it. And um, so the Lord just has a way to, I don't know, there's a, just a certain purpose for everything that everybody does. And I'm in hope of being a sheep, and they all have a certain path and a certain, you know, there's a certain purpose for a certain reason. I first saw a Zodiac wheel at that uh, Catholic school. It was on the cover of a paper stapled yearbook. And I still remember certain students' Zodiac signs. I have that kind of memory of numbers, dates, and birthdays. And I just, I, I have that. And um, I don't know. It was just... Um, yeah, it was crazy. So when I read the book of Daniel, which we're in now, and I'm like, well, Daniel's all about the end times. I keep I keep doing Revelation and Daniel. I've written two books on the end times. One's published, the other I'm editing down the final edit on it. And uh, I was trained in astrology and Daniel was trained in astrology. And we're both end times people for the Lord, so to speak. So yeah, it's just interesting. All right. So we're going to continue with Nebuchadnezzar's, uh, how Nebuchadnezzar was called. And I was listening to the Bible. I listen to it while I eat. And all the way from beginning to end. And this is my second time through. And I'm in Jeremiah right now. And Nebuchadnezzar took care of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was... Uh, thrown in jail by the Israelites, if I listen to that correctly. And Nebuchadnezzar came and took the Jews, captured them, and he released the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah was thrown in jail by the Jews. They were angry with Jeremiah and had him beaten and imprisoned in the house of Jonathan, the secretary, which they made into a prison. Jeremiah was put into a vaulted cell in a dungeon where he remained a long time. There it is, Jeremiah 37. And then watch this. Nebuchadnezzar frees the prophet Jeremiah. And of course, the word freeze came up. So let's do freeze. With an apostle, let's just Nebuchadnezzar and Jeremiah's letters to the exiles. Nebuchadnezzar captures Jerusalem. Who freed Jeremiah from cistern? The king commanded Abed Malek, the Cushite, take 30 men from here and you with you and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the cistern before he dies. And I believe that king was Nebuchadnezzar. Who is the Babylonian army commander that freed Jeremiah? There it is. And there it is, Nebuchadnezzar. So that's who is the king of Babylon. And this is Nebuchadnezzar's story about how the Lord called him to salvation. And you can see in Jeremiah, he was already doing the Lord's work by taking care of one of God's prophets. And this was the king of Babylon that took Israel captive.
but it was all part of God's plan, wasn't it, to take Israel captive, because it was all part of God's plan that Israel would fall to paganism, which you see so-called Christian churches today, and they're celebrating the pagan Easter or the pagan Christmas or Valentine's or whatever. And there you go. There you have it. So that's what the Great Tribulation is for, to call the church out of every world religion. The true church today is spread out evenly, percentage-wise, in my opinion, throughout the earth in every world religion. Fake, Christ fake Christianity with free will and all that Christmas and Easterns, that's just a world religion. No better and no worse than a Far Eastern, Middle Eastern. They're all the same in that they're not in truth. Pagan Rome, all of it. All of it. Where is that video at? 86%. Okay. All right. So we're still in Matthew uh, 23. I think tomorrow we begin Matthew 24. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye make clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You blind Pharisee, cleanse first which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean. So he's talking about people. If your heart, if on the inside of you is filthy, don't worry about the outside. It's what comes out of the mouth, Jesus said. That matters, because that's what's in the heart. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. All right, hang on just a second. Let me load that. There we go. Where are we at? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Yes. Ah. Uh, even, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Do people do that today? If you run a church or attend a church, and lest you boast of that free will decision, you call yourself righteous. And you, you, you might say, well, well, I'm a sinner. You know, that, that's popular to say in that worldly Christian religion today that is not in truth. They'll be like, well, I'm a sinner. And they don't really have that repentant heart. And they just rely on God's, uh, they incorrectly rely on the incorrect version of grace. And they have a, a wrong definition of grace where they put it more like in today's terms, like grace just means giving somebody a break. Hey, give me some grace, man. Hey, I, I, I parked in the wrong spot. Hey, how about a little grace? I made a mistake. No, the biblical grace is favor. It is by being God, having God's favor. You are elect. You are elected. You are chosen from before the foundation of the world. That's what the previous chapter, Ephesians 1 says. And you get to Ephesians 2, and it says, by grace you are saved through faith, which is the proper call by the Holy Spirit, the proper spiritual baptism, uh, all the way through your proper walk. Faith without works is dead. So you're saved by being God's chosen through the calling and repentant process by Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. And Jesus said, my sheep are my voice. That's how you're saved. It's by being God's, having God's favor. You are saved through 
the spiritual calling through the proper walk, which those two encompass faith. So by grace, you're saved through faith. And it says, it is not of yourselves. And yet in the church, they tell you, it is of yourself. You have to make a free will decision. And it says, it is not of your, it is a gift of God. It is not of yourself, lest you boast. What is the boast? That I made a free will decision with my amazing heart or intellect or whatever it is that you claim you had to choose Jesus, which allowed you to get saved. I got saved. You need to get saved. No, that's not how it works. That's a world religion equal to Far Eastern, Middle Eastern in truth. You might as well be of a Far Eastern or Middle Eastern religion than to have one that bears his name and to absolutely not be in any truth whatsoever. They don't have hell right. They don't have baptism right. They don't have grace or faith right. Even so, outwardly, if so, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. That's what Jesus said. They all came, as, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, didn't we go to church on Sunday in your name? I'm paraphrasing. And Jesus says, I never knew you get away from me, you workers of iniquity. And there it is. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers in the blood of the prophets. Oh, yeah, they would. They went ahead and killed Jesus. <laughs> Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Of course, hell is the grave. It's another thing they don't teach properly. Death and hell are thrown into the lake of fire. Death and the grave are thrown into the lake of fire. They're already dead when they go into the lake of fire. Killed about six verses earlier at Revelation 29, when the flame comes down and devours them. Jesus said, fear him that can destroy both body and soul in hell, which meant in the grave. It's destroyed. You're not alive going, oh, I'm burning. It's so hot here. The story of the rich man and Lazarus is called the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. It's a parable. It's not an actual situation. It's a parallel to judgment. And the main parallel is that there is a great gulf fixed where you cannot pass from one to the other, which would be judgment. That's why God has to wipe away all our tears. We see all of our loved ones being judged. They're weeping and gnashing their teeth. Like it says, you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets standing in the kingdom. That's not the new heaven. That's the millennial kingdom. Thousand year reign on earth where Satan is loosed after the thousand years. That's when all the goats are raised from the dead. And they surround this revamped Israel that got revamped during God's wrath. That's what God's wrath was about, was cleansing. That's what all the sevens are for. Sevens number for cleansing in the book of Revelation and in, throughout the whole Bible. So, escape the, th yeah, there we go. We finished that. Let's move over to Daniel. That they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. So Daniel is telling Nebuchadnezzar the dream that they shall drive you from men. You're going to be away from men, and your dwelling is going to be with the beast of the field. 
and you're going to be eating grass like an ox. You're going to be covered with the wet of the dew. When you wake up out there in the field, you're going to be covered in dew until seven times. So seven years is going to pass over until you will then know. Again, the seven for cleansing. He will be cleansed after the seven years. And he will know that the Most High ruleth after this process in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The Lord gave you your kingdom, Nebuchadnezzar. You didn't free will it. And that's what this is all about. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. In other words, it's God that rules, not man's free will decisions. Wherefore, O king, Daniel saying, let my counsel be acceptable to you and break off your sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. So he told him, change your ways, take care of the poor, be a perfect king. And know that the most high God is the ruler. My God, that my God is the most high ruler. At the end of the 12 months, Nebuchadnezzar, of course, ignored him. He walked out in his palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? And while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. All right, glad you're all here. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.